long game. Hey. Baseball, the national pastime of the United States. It was invented in the 1830s in Cooperstown, New York by Abner Doubleday. Baseball is a sport of focus, accuracy, and repetition. Of timing the speed and direction of the pitch so it strikes against the swing of the bat in the perfect moment of contact. For many, it is a game, and for others, it is a lifestyle. But baseball does not come without its risks, as many players have had damage to their arms and shoulders while playing. The overuse of throwing, especially of repetitive pitches, places a lot of stress on the shoulders. A muscle group that especially becomes damaged in baseball players is the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff stabilizes the head of the humerus inside of the shoulder socket, which allows for full range of motion of the arm. However, tears can grow gradually or rapidly depending on the movements. Common symptoms include a dull ache deep in the shoulder, difficulty and pain when moving the arm, and popping or cracking sounds when moving the arm. All of the muscles in the rotator cuff originate from the scapula and insert onto the tubercles of the humerus. The rotator cuff consists of the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. The subscapularis is on the anterior portion of the scapula and medially rotates the arm. The supraspinatus sits on top of the scapula. This muscle assists the deltoid with abduction, moving the arm away from the body. The infraspinatus is on the posterior side of the scapula and laterally rotates the shoulder. The infraspinatus has a very similar function to the teres minor, which also laterally rotates the shoulder. Together, these four muscles both stabilize the shoulder joint by keeping the head of the humerus in the shoulder socket while also allowing rotation and movement of the shoulder. I had the opportunity to speak with a Hamilton College baseball player who tore his rotator cuff during his collegiate career. Jay Schlafer, 23, told me about his injury and his process back to recovery from this rotator cuff tear. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. I was just wondering how you tore your rotator cuff. Was it over time and what were kind of like the symptoms that you felt? All right, so it wasn't really a single instance when I felt like I tore my rotator cuff. It was kind of just wear and tear like over time. Mm -hmm. And how I kind of figured out that it was torn was since I'm a baseball player, um, a lot of things that they measure are your velocities of like the ball you throw and it was very noticeable that my like velocities were way down and overall my shoulder did hurt a lot but it was like almost like just like a sparking pain when I threw the ball and then it would kind of just feel like very numbish after and that's when they wanted me to get tested out and, and yep and they figured out I had a torn rotator cuff and a scap tear in my labrum. Mm -hmm. What test did they do? So they put me in for an MRI, go scanning and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how it works, but it was an MRI. <laughs> gotcha. And yeah, then they found out my <laughs> rotator cuff was torn and mm -hmm. my labrum. So how long, how long were you out for uh, of baseball? How long was the, re the recovery period? So the recovery process from that, so for a regular person, it would be two months or a month and a half in the sling, six weeks, and then they said you should feel perfectly normal after six months, um, maybe four to six months. But then for like a baseball player, it, it's actually more of like a 12, 12 month recovery. Some people are quicker, some people take a lot longer. Um, but for me, they really tried to rush me back in nine months. So I started throwing up a seven to eight months post-surgery. Um, and what ended up happening is I was one of the people that couldn't handle coming back that quickly. So they actually, um, they didn't quite shut me down, but I had to go play the outfield without actually like being able to throw the ball, which is kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I would say that overall it was more like a full year recovery. 
Wow. I know you played some of the season. How was it throwing this season? So, I actually never, so my surgery was on the labrum. It wasn't on the rotator cuff. Right. I want to make that a point. Um, so this season, it does feel a lot better. It feels a lot more natural, like throwing my velocities, everything like looks correct again. Um, but you still do feel, it still doesn't feel great, especially in cold weather. But sometimes, occasionally, it will still kind of like flare up, but not so often. It's only really when I try to like put max effort into a throw. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you so much. In the case of a mild rotator cuff injury, ice, rest, and physical therapy are advised. However, if the injury is more severe, surgery may be necessary. A surgery that is very common is called arthroscopic tendon repair. In this surgery, there are holes that are inserted into the humerus with sutures that are then placed through the tendon. Once the sutures are through the tendon, they are then pulled over the previous site of injury, fixing the rotator cuff.